For those of you guys who are watching who don't know who Steven Matz is, he is a New York Mets pitcher, 29 yep. years old, drafted second round 2009 by the New York Mets out of Ward Melville High School in New York. MLB debut 2015 at 24 years old, young buck. Uh, went 4-0 that year, 2.27 ERA, left-handed pitcher. I've got to be honest with you. I haven't kept up with you too much. So I had to do a little uh, searching on Twitter to see what's been going on with my man, Steven Matz. And I, I, the last post I came across, I saw this thing. You had some shirts going out. Uh, it was Truth 32 and Pastime with Purpose. And I actually went on the site and bought a couple shirts for me and, and my son last night. And I was reading into it, and it sounds like it's some really cool stuff. You're doing it, donating money to the first responders in New York or all over. Can you just tell me some more about it? I thought it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, in 2015, you know, we, we had a good good run. I had a pretty good season in the, you know, my first year and pitching the World Series. So I sat down with my agent. and was like, you know, let's – and he knows kind of my passion of, you know, trying to make it, you know, an impact of with the platform and stuff. And he has the same idea. So – we did a few different things and he knows how I uh, kind of respect blue collar workers and kind of the, you know, the service members, military, police, firefighter. And so we started by just inviting them out to a game, uh, 32 members, whether it was police, military, firefighter, and they could bring a guest and I would just meet them and say hello. And anyway, it started really like taking on a life of its own. And, uh, you know, people started, you know, like my agent was up in, uh, doing recruiting a kid somewhere up in you know like Chicago or something and he's you know he mentioned that I was one of his clients and he's like oh I heard what he's doing with the first responders and at that point I was just you know giving him my time and so um, now we're, we're building scholarships for kids who lost their parents in the line of duty and uh, you know now with pandemics like this we're gonna obviously help out so it's been awesome and uh, it's kind of really taken a life of its own so it's been pretty fun to be a part of that. That's sweet, man. That's so cool. I mean, you know, ever since I met you, I know you were a real genuine, caring person. We got to spend some time together down there in uh, Port St. Lucie with the Mets in, the, in, the, in that right. hotel room. Whose hotel room was that? That we were that was on and Dotson's. Dotson. And we just crashed there every day. There was like, I don't know, <laughs> six or seven dudes that was there every single day, <laughs> uh, which was awesome. Um, but you've always been a great guy, genuine guy, a big heart. Um, and I know the, the New York has got to love you for doing stuff like this. I mean, you know, the first responders up there in the, this is basically the epicenter of the pandemic right now, as far as I'm hearing down here in Florida uh, mm -hmm. is in New York, you know, so um, taking care of those guys is, is huge. And, and they love that stuff. And, and obviously coming from someone like you, who is super sincere and passionate about what they're doing, I'm sure they I'm sure they love it and, and appreciate it and appreciate it across the country. So I wanted to do something too. I didn't tell you. Um, I know you might have saw in the little paper I sent you, but I wanted yeah. to do a giveaway of those shirts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy ten of those shirts and wow. give them away to whoever. Uh, what I want the people who are watching to do. If you're watching this, leave a comment down below and just tell us what you're going through, your story in baseball, some of the struggles that you've been through. And I'll go through and pick the top 10 uh, stories and comments, and I'll give away a shirt, one of Matt's shirt. Really cool shirts. Tell us about the shirts. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I got to give my agent credit on that. You know, he's, he's big into it, it's, which is really cool, you know, because, you know, sometimes the agency could be a little cutthroat uh, type of business, you know. But my agent's just passionate about uh, serving other people. And so he's just sending me designs all the time. Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And I'm just like, that's great. That's awesome. I'm not very creative. Mine would be a little more simple. So um yeah now he came up with it and just kind of back and forth so it was cool but, i love the uh i love the black one with all the the words on the back like uh, i forget what the words were but they were like motivational you know like hard work yeah. or you know stuff like that that one looks and it looks good on you man you look good like a model you know i was like who you know because when i first opened the web page i see it and i just see the guns you know from the neck down <laughs> I, open it. I was like oh that's nuts hey all right buddy i see you and then uh, the other one says uh truth 32 and you were talking about 32 guys came to the game or whatever and the reason why is that's your number in the big right game. so uh that's cool what is what is the meaning behind truth uh so the it's actually so the it started with true 32 because you know a lot of kids or whatever say oh you know you're our our hero you know being a baseball player on the field well it's kind of reflecting that towards military police and firefighter who are the true heroes of our community you know so that's where it came that's where we started it Oh, that's sweet. That's really cool. Uh, what is, and what is uh, pastime with a purpose? 
So that's actually uh, Brad Ziegler's. It's actually like the official foundation. He does a lot of work with military. And so he's part of our agency. And so if the money's funneled through his and then um, given to True32, because mine's not like enough, the, uh, you know, people can't get a tax write off if they would do it to me, you know. So that's why they, they can do it through Pastime with Purpose. And it's, you know, all lumped into the same idea through service service members of our country so that's so cool what you guys are doing man i love it and i'm I'm glad i found out about it and happy to be on board and happy to uh, help out in any way i can you know i've got the youtube channel so anything you guys need to help get the word out whatever i can do just let me know um awesome thank you um let's talk about your baseball journey because like you said a lot of kids look up to you and you know i as a young kid myself and i'm sure you as well my whole goal was to be a professional baseball player. That's what I, my dream was to do. And I'm, millions of kids across this country have the same goals. Tell us about your baseball journey, where you started. Was it in, you know, T-ball, how it went all the way through, all the way till you got drafted into the major leagues. And also mm-hmm. talk about some of the struggles that you had mm-hmm. along the way that you had to overcome because there's a lot of struggles along the way. This ain't easy, I'm sure. So tell us your story. So it started, I have an older brother, three years older than me. So I just remember kind of wanting to do what he wanted, what he was doing, you know. And so he was playing, we called it instructional league. I, we never played t-ball for some reason, but he was playing instructional league when uh, he was six and I was three. And I, just, and I don't know if I remember it or if I watched home videos of it, but I just remember running around out in the outfield. I had a, a righty glove on my, uh, on my wrong hand and I was, you know, but I had always kind of had a good arm when I was young and I remember then when I became six, I was in instructional league and I remember just firing that ball. You know, they were a little bit lighter balls. I remember just launching them. And then as I, when I was eight, I got to uh, play up and uh, travel ball. And that was when kids pitched to each other. And so actually that's when I started, I was playing against Marcus Stroman when I was eight, we were both playing up to the nine year old kid pitch. And we were, he was on the Syag Braves and I was on the three village. No, he was on the, Syag Braves and I was on the three village Yankees and so uh you know that's when it started and then uh, I was always pretty you know advanced for for my age and then what happened was you know your wife can tell you being from New York you got a lot of Italian kids you know what I'm saying oh yeah they hit they they go through puberty pretty early and so I was they got like, them thick legs too <laughs> got some thick legs they got hairy armpits and I'm here this little <laughs> I got no development, no muscle. And so, you know, through junior high, I felt like those kids got stronger and I'm staying down here. And so my skill was always there. And, you know, I, I love the game so much. That's the only thing I wanted to do. So my skill was there, but just my sheer strength and all that stuff, these kids started getting a little ahead of me. And so I would say from, you know, you know seventh to about even like 10th or 11th grade, I I still was like behind the curve a little bit as far as like just the strength, you know, like I couldn't really hit home runs. And so, um, you know, I was, I remember it was after my fresh or after my junior year of high school, I, uh, I wanted to go to play division two college to go play first base. And so my dad signed me up for the showcase in Connecticut and I went to go play first. I might like, I really wanted to play for Franklin Pierce in New Hampshire because they're a powerhouse D2 school, wood bat, thought that was cool. I was like, I'm going to go play first base at Franklin Pierce. I'm going to go to the showcase and get seen by them. And so I went and pitched and I'd never been clocked before. Now this is going into my senior year. And so, um, I, I pitched and I struck out like five out of six guys and I was throwing like 87 to 89. I was like, Whoa, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm a gangly lefty and all the scouts just start coming to me. You know, I remember Boston college was like one of the first ones in this tournament team. They're like, Hey, you know, you want, to, you want to come to the national showcase in Minnesota at the Metrodome? And I was, me and my dad were like, are you serious? Like, yeah, we're coming. And then I was throwing 91, and I was like, holy cow, I have no idea. I threw this hard. Now my, I got agents contacting me, all of a sudden professional teams, big D1s contacting me. And it was like a blindside, you know, like the blindside movie. We got guys coming into your house and all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa, what happened here? After a few months, I'm like on the mat, you know. And so – um Ended up committing to Coastal Carolina, which I was talking with uh, Brad Rock the other day. I was like, I don't know. I'm watching this Last Dance show, you know, about UNC and all that stuff. And I'm like, 
these guys were recruiting me. I didn't even give them a chance to offer me because I just I loved Coastal Carolina. So anyway, I committed to Coastal Carolina and then uh, had a really good senior season. I, I was got up to like 95. I started now. I started catching up to these guys. You know, physically, I started selling out a little bit. And then uh, the Mets came calling, and they they had a lot of interest in me and offered me enough money to um, you know, to bypass college. So I signed, and I, I got drafted in June. Signed in August 2009, and then uh, 2010 blew out my elbow. So I didn't even get to pitch a professional pitch, and my you know my elbow went. So I had Tommy John, and I'm supposed to come back in about 12, 14 months or so. But for me, it took me two full years. And so I missed all – signed 2009, August. Season was already over. Came back 2010, boom, my elbow out. Missed all 2010. Missed all 2011. And so my first professional pitch in the game was 2012 in the rookie ball. Wow. And then, so I uh, had a pretty good year, but I didn't really know anything about routine or starting. I haven't pitched in so long. Then my shoulder started hurting. So I got shut down early. And so the 2013 came around. Now I'm starting to get a routine down, figuring it out. I pitched a full season in low A. Um, and now my knee started hurting. And so uh, at the end of that year, I didn't miss it. I missed maybe one start, but I, I pitched a full year. Had a, had a really good year. We won a, a Sally League championship, which was so awesome. Right. And then uh, at the end of that year, had a patella surgery. Rehabbed that a little bit year. And now they added me to the 40-man roster which was a big surprise to me. Hey, my, sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so they had me to the 40-man roster. I was only in low A, so it was a big surprise. And then um, I got invited to big league spring training in 2014 and then started that season in high A. I got called up halfway through uh, that year to double A. We won a uh, Eastern League championship. So we won the double A championship, which was awesome. That, that was like, probably the high, one of the highlights of my, my career because I pitched uh, – I think it was a game. It was a three series, you know, and I pitched game three. And I took a no-hitter into the eighth inning. Wow. And, you know, I got to hit in double A. I hit two balls to the warning track, so I thought I was awesome, you know. <laughs> so that, that year ended really good. Had a great year. Was healthy. Ended the year healthy. Came back the next year. It started in triple A, Las Vegas. And – uh had a really, really, you know, it was probably the best I've ever pitched in my life. You know, that's a really hard league to pitch in. And for half a season, I think I pitched to like a 2.2 URA in the, in the PCL for like 90 innings. And I got called up that year in 2015. And, you know, I was throwing so well in AAA, they were trying to save my innings because they knew I was probably going to get called up. So I'd be at like 75 pitches in seven innings, 75 pitches in six innings, and they would pull me. Wow. And so I got called up to the major leagues in June, June 28th, 2015. And, um, you know, I threw 110 pitches and <laughs> no adrenaline and everything. And so I was used to throwing 75 pitches. And so <laughs> had a partial tear to my lap, my first game in the major oh leagues. Oh my God. And so I was, you know, I was pitching and, uh, you know, I was, uh, the next game I went out, my lap was just hurting me hurt me and actually I went through uh, six shutout innings in, in LA but my lap was just not feeling right and so two starts in the big leagues shut down then I got called or I got sent to Fort St. Lucie back to do more rehab which I'm pretty accustomed to at this point <laughs> and then uh, you know came back had uh, four more starts in the big leagues and then we made the playoffs and so boom I was pitching game four of every series in the playoffs you know I was able to pitch the clinching game of the um, the NLCS against the Cubs at Wrigley Field, which was awesome, and then got to pitch game four of the World Series. We lost that game. Uh, but and So that was a wild year. Uh, and then uh, just been big league since. Had another elbow surgery at the end of 2016. Had another elbow surgery at the end of 2017. Got both of those years cut short. And then uh, 2018, 2019, had 30-plus starts or 30 starts in each of those uh, seasons. So, wow. wow. That's my journey. That's a, that's a great journey. Obviously a lot of struggle there. Like, like I, like we were talking about, and it's not an easy path for anyone that's, you know, wants to be a professional football player, but uh, for you, it happened really quick. I got some questions just listening to your yeah. story. First of all, were at growing up, 
Were you a Mets or Yankees fan? You got <laughs> to be honest. So being honest, as I got drafted, 